Jesus says to us something quite clearly that should shake us a bit up. I hope it does. It shakes me up. He said, whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this faithless and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Now, most of us would probably say, well, you know, Father, we're not ashamed of Jesus. We believe in him. That's why we're here at Mass. And I get that. I, I also believe in him. That's why I'm here at this Mass, too. And yet, <clears throat> are we ashamed of his words? Jesus actually challenges us in ways beyond what we're used to. And we might shrink back because of the fact that there's not much faith in this generation. So when Jesus says, the ones who believe in me will do the works that I have done in greater, and we say, oh, yeah, well, that's not me, we're ashamed of his words. Very interestingly enough, in our first reading, when St. James is talking about faith and works, he mentions, yes, he mentions the corporal works of mercy, right? He says, you know, if you say to somebody, who has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? And he's saying that doesn't save the person. Notice we're not talking about just eternal destiny kind of salvation, but the health and well-being of the person. And when we think about good works or the works that God wants us to do, sometimes we just stop there. Oh, yeah, let's just give to the poor. And then what happens? We become a pietistic, non-governmental organization that looks to do exactly what everybody else does in the world. Help the poor only through material goods. And I'm not saying that that's bad to help the poor with material goods, because it's obviously necessary. But the example that James gives us of faith and works working together in the kind of way that is credited as righteousness should blow our minds. It's Abraham. But what work did Abraham do? What good work did Abraham do? He offered up his son. What faith did Abraham have about that? That God would raise Isaac from the dead. As it says in the book of Hebrews. Abraham didn't just believe that when God said to him, hey, you're going to have descendants through Isaac, that if he offered his son up, that somehow he was going to have another son. That would seem natural. He believed in something entirely supernatural. That since God said, you're going to have descendants through Isaac, and then God said, offer him up to me, that if God was asking for that, and God had already spoken this truth, then it must be that God was going to raise him from the dead. So the question that should smack right in front of our faces is this. When we think about the works that prove faith, are we willing to step out in the kind of faith that asks us to believe in the power of God operative today? And the kind of faith in God to operate even through little old us? Well, some of us are younger than me. So, you know, the idea that God can use us all. Because Jesus said, the ones who believe in me will do the works that I have done and greater. Because I'm going to the Father and you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. And those are works that require not just faith that God exists. As, as it says in the letter of the James, you know, the letter here, 
Very simply put, the demons believe that God exists and tremble, but that doesn't save them. But a faith in the goodness of God beyond what we've ever seen, like Abraham. I hope that this disturbs us in in an appropriate way. Because it should. It should ask us, what do we actually believe? Yes, the church provides for the needs of the poor. Again, I'm not dismissing that. In fact, I think it's very important. I'm also somebody, I want, us, I want more and more people to support um, groups such as Let Them Live or St. John's Place that help people who are in crisis pregnancies, specifically with the money and the resources and the training and the education that they need in order not only to have their child, but then to support their child afterwards. This is Christian charity. But Christian charity, divorced from faith in the miraculous, still only remains good deeds that anyone can do in the world. God is calling us to something more. This is the new evangelization, the new evangelical methods that St. John Paul II talked about when he mentioned that the church is being called by the Holy Spirit to step out in new and creative means. I can't think of anything that's new or creative enough than the very giftings of the Holy Spirit that God has promised to his people. Not so much new, it's something from the church as of old, but maybe new to us today. It might be something new to us because no one ever told us this part of the catechism or talked to us about this part of the catechism. And let's face it, it's scary. That's why people avoid it. It's risky. You mean it requires actual faith. Not a faith that says that I can control my destiny, but a faith that says, God, I don't know, you're in charge. I wonder, when when Abraham was about to offer up Isaac, was there any question in his heart? There might have been. But he was still going to do it, because God had said it, and he believed that God said also that he'd receive children through, through Isaac, so... He, he trusted, even if doubts came up, he trusted. Faith is not the absence of doubt. Faith is deciding to believe in the face of doubt. So we ask God, because Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith, we ask him to take our unbelief, not so much unbelief in Jesus himself, but maybe unbelief in the supernatural ways God wants to move in and through us today. Take that unbelief and help us to believe. I remember the, the, epileptic, uh, the epileptic boy's father who says to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. This is our prayer constantly. We take that mustard seed of faith. Yeah, Lord, I trust you. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But you said it, I'm going to believe it, and I'm going to say what Mary said, which is, let it be done unto me according to your word. Not my understanding, but your words. So as we come to Jesus in the Eucharist today, the author and perfecter of our faith, let us ask him for the faith and the works to do greater things than Abraham, to do greater things than Elijah, to do greater things than Elisha, to do greater things than John the Baptist, Because Jesus is the one who said that the least in the kingdom is greater than any of those. Amen.